putt. Goddamn, get it done with ya. Woo. When the blow up now, everybody's so unusual with it. Shit. But said times in his rhymes, cause his memories. We run into these guys. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna be showing you how to change the battery in your key fob. Now, as many of you guys know, I've already done a video explaining to you how to recharge the battery on your key fob. But if that don't work for a lot of you guys, I'm gonna be showing you how you go ahead and change it and how you access your key and what you can do to actually repair your key when you have to either get your case open because as you guys know, BMW sealed them and they want you to buy a new key. So I'm gonna show you another way how you can get your transponder out and move it into another case and then you'll have another BMW key with ease and how to change the battery on your keys. So let's go over and I'm gonna show you what you need to do. Okay guys, as you'll see here, this is the three keys that you're seeing right here. Now, if you'll see here, this one's got one of the smart keys, which has got the smart battery in it. So if we just go ahead and pop that open right now, you'll see inside of here, we pull off the cap and there's one of your batteries right there. This is a CR2032 battery inside. And as you'll see there, it's one of the smart remotes that what I usually do is when I make people a new key, I usually give it with this one so they can always change their battery over again. So these are the keys I usually provide. So as you see, that's one of my blank ones, which is right there. And I usually just put a sticker on it and it, it looks like an original BMW key. And the person don't have to worry about accessing the battery anymore, or cutting the remote open because you can change the battery. So that's that first key that a lot of you always go on about that you've got and you'll keep battery rechargeable. No, it isn't. Because it's a smart key and you guys can gain access to it. So as you'll see here now, this is another key that I actually opened up. And as you'll see, if I just open it up, you'll see this is the transponder inside. Now, when you cut these open, you have to be very careful not to cut the transponder itself. Now, as you see on the back, you've got your more buttons. You've got the unlock, lock, and your trunk release. And as you see right there, that's the EEPROM on the transponder as well, which you register to the car and which registers links up to the CAS and it stores all your EEPROM for your data on your CAS to your key. So that would be the EEPROM chip right there. Now, a lot of people will ask me, can you get used keys and reuse them? I can, yes, because I can delete old keys and make them blank again, or even I can unlock keys if they've been locked and make them work on the car. As you see here, the battery is built in onto the board and it's built onto this little device here. Now, my best bit is to buy a whole new one of these and reset, do it back onto the board. So well, what you would do here is, if you see, you've got solder points right here and here, you've got the two solder points. So these two solder points are what you would desolder there and there. And what you would end up doing is releasing the battery, which I'm gonna go ahead and show you in a second. But the first thing I wanna show you is how to open up one of these key fobs, which is what we're gonna go ahead and do now. Now, as you see, this one's completely sealed. This is another old key from my test bench that come with a cast, it's sealed completely. We take the key out and you see it's completely sealed, it ain't gonna crack open, I'm gonna show you how you get access to that. So what you wanna go ahead and do is get your razor knife, and what you wanna do is you wanna be very careful with this as you go along, and you, what you wanna do is just press down, and you wanna just skim the top of it like that. You don't wanna be careful not to cut the board inside, because if you gain access to the board, you end up destroying the board. You have to remember, guys, these keys were not made, made to be open. We are trying to open it. Now, when you're satisfied that it's cut up enough and open enough, what you're gonna wanna go ahead and do is you're gonna wanna put a flat-headed screwdriver right in the middle here, and this is the way I always do it. And you need to be careful here not to damage the key or the transponder inside. Now, once you've done that, you will notice you really have to set it up and hold it steady while you tap into it to open it up, as you see here, I'm opening it up in all sections. Be careful not to damage your transponder while doing this. Now, for some of you, you're not gonna have a spare key, but I have spares if this was to go wrong. But luckily, this is just a old test bench key, so I don't have to worry too much about it, but for many of you, it'll be your original key. So you need to bear that in mind when you're doing this. And as you'll see there, we've now got access 
to the transponder. Now what you want to do is just be careful with this to prise it out. And you just want to take it out of this case like that. Now as you see here, we've now got the transponder out. So what I'm going to go ahead and show you now is how to release this battery. Now, you can buy these with the whole kit online for around probably three pound and they come with everything here. As you'll see, it come with a whole bit for the charging and you'll just have to solder it back. So I'm gonna quickly show you how you, I usually get them out. So guys, you're now gonna see me remove this. You're gonna see me remove the battery and I'm gonna to touch the solder points. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna put flux on there because we don't wanna burn the board. It's another thing, if you guys don't have flux, make sure to use flux because you don't wanna destroy the board with the solder. So you're going to put a bit of flux on there and what we're going to do is we're just going to hold our soldering iron on the solder as you'll see here and the battery should release in a second. So as you see that's one out. Now what we're going to do is do the other side and that's the battery released. So as you'll see there guys now the battery is now released from the solder points. So as you see there guys, the battery is now disconnected from the board and you'll see the solder points right here and here that we've desoldered. Now to solder the battery back, it will be a very straight, simple swap. So guys, as you'll see there, that is how you'd remove the battery from the board. And then all you would go ahead and do is just solder the new one. So now you guys are probably asking me, what am I gonna do about my case now I've cut this one open? Well, there's a solution for that. If you see here, these are Brand new cases with blank keys, which I'm soon getting my cutting machine here as well to cut keys. And you've got a new case. Now these cases just actually click together. You'd put the transponder right inside here, and then you'd put that on top, and then you will just click it together like so, and it would shut that whole key in. And then if you never need to get access, you can easily just pop it off and gain access to the key. Very simple. This is a lot easier than the old BMW keys that you have to cut to open to get the transponder out. With these, you no longer have to do that, they just click together. So as you see there, it's very, very simple to do. The solder in the battery does take some professionals to be able to do that because obviously everyone's not very comfortable with soldering. I get that. But as you see, there is a simple job just to desolder the points there and there and to take off the battery. Make sure you do buy a whole new one with this. They do sell them online with this actual casing, which is the rechargeable bit. This is the rechargeable bit that the ring touches on the car itself to recharge that battery. This is what it's for. This is why it makes contact with a transponder to be able to recharge when it's inside the ignition. This is what I was telling you guys about. This is the reason why you need to change your batteries if they're fully dead because they recharge from this ring right here. If a lot of you ain't seen that, you now have, and I hope this will actually help you change your battery in your remote control if it's gone dead. Another reason if your remote control is not working it, and it's working from a long range, it will not be your fob zone or your battery, but please don't think that, it will be your diversity antenna. If you're having problems with your battery, you'll notice because your car just won't unlock full stop. You'll, have, you'll notice when you you pull it in the ignition, it'll work for a minute, lock and unlock your doors, but next minute, it ain't working at all, which then means it'll be your battery going dead completely. So change your battery out. Okay, guys, so as you've seen now, I've just shown you now how to replace the battery in your key fob, which I know has been very, very highly requested on my channel and also how to open your key shell and how you're gonna to need to replace it after you've cut the original BMW one. As I said, there's many, many aftermarket parts now you can actually fit to the BMW key, so now you can actually open and replace the battery. As I explained to you already as well, you cannot unblock a used key, so you cannot go and buy a key from another car and expect it to work. Only I know how to unblock use keys or clear them fully so they can be used again on another car. That's not a simple trick and it's not very easy either. And just to answer the question before a lot of people start asking me, no, the key will not need programming. The only time it's gonna need programming is if you've purchased a brand new key with a new transponder and it's not registered to your car. That's when it will need programming to the car and synchronize into your EWS with your car as well. Cause obviously it's a new key, it's blank, it doesn't got no data. So therefore you will not be able to just program it with clicking the buttons on and off like you could on the old E46 getting a key car. It done well like that. These keys have to be programmed via computer to the car. Therefore, if you do buy a whole brand new kit with a new transponder, that is what will have to happen. So I hope this is gonna clear up a lot of the issues for you guys, and I hope this now helps a lot of you guys repair your BMW key. Thank you very much for watching this. BMW Dr. Dean here, and goodbye.